Good morning, folks. We've got more from the Active Sun. We've got three pieces of eye candy today, and then we'll swing back for a double update on solar micronova science through the side door. Let's get to these sunspots at spaceweathernews.com, and we find the last day on the sun with multiple pops on the southwest departing limb. The coronal hole is departing as well there, so its solar wind is set to arrive at Earth within about 24 hours. And those pops you saw at the limb were from filament destabilizations. The CMEs from them will miss Earth as well. Want to quickly let us watch the super development in the northern active region. As it crests out of view, it shows the sun's intentions over the next four years of sunspot maximum. We are almost there. Shifting to another pretty thing, and luckily it's that super typhoon that has no plans on charging the coastline, but rather going out to sea. Not before producing an amazing concentricity pattern in gravity waves here on satellite view. Up next, the ESA is continuing their focus on space debris. New video with more detail on the new constellations and how we could soon cross a population threshold where avoidance maneuvers used today are no longer viable options. ICRA are up next, and they spotted a nearly dead star with a one-second pulsation. It's a one-second pulsar. The animation of its twisting jets as it spins is pretty incredible by any stretch of the imagination, and the pseudo-helix you think you see coming out both sides is indeed there, fortified by outer shell observations and following the magnetic field pattern known to come out of all such sphere magnets in space. Now folks, veteran observers recall our first fight with Harvard, the danger versus lack thereof of magnetic excursions on Earth. This was the one where the number one geophysics journal on Earth stepped in weeks later, solidifying our position that they are indeed extinction-level events. Now that one got more attention than our second fight with Harvard, which was somewhat of an embarrassment for the scientists, and I don't blame their letting it go. But it was about Nova Dust, and that's where we are today. There is no question, from every study that looks at the matter, there must have been at least one recent nearby Nova that deposited the isotopes and dust we see on Earth. That's mainstream science. The problem has always been that if the star was too far away, or it happened too long ago, the isotopes would be gone or wouldn't have arrived yet. And yet, to put a nova so recent in nearby likely means the destruction of Earth and no humans. So how do we fix that? Our answer is they got the nearby and recent part right, but it wasn't a supernova. It was a recurring solar micronova, over and over again every 12,000 years. This was where our fight went to condemning Harvard's lack of considering magnetic fields in their analysis. Slavin always led the way, and our position was that this didn't accurately tell them where the dust would end up. It would ultimately be the Air Force physicists leading the way, showing how all you have to do is actually include those magnetic fields in the model, and the dust is trapped. You see this with nebula in space all the time. They have defined boundaries like a cloud. And if the dust is trapped within the Nova remnant by magnetic fields, then the dust on Earth came from a very nearby Nova, from the Sun. And today, we aren't here to rag on Slavin or Harvard, but come back to answer their main question that inspired their search for how to get the dust out in the first place. They have needed to expel more of the energy in these events, and it turns out they need to consider the full spectrum of cosmic ray acceleration, the plasma particles that are also produced, but are supremely different than the dust and the isotopes. And when you do so, Slavin's need to find a way to expel the dust disappears, as well should the notion that you don't need to model magnetic fields in a nova remnant. It's the sun, and it's a long period recurrent micronova star. Its trigger for the next one is here, working our solar system already after having already worked the nearby stars in line ahead of us. Proxima had its super outburst about a decade ago, and since that time has continued to break records and show increased activity in other fashions. While this wasn't the super flare from a decade ago, they have recently seen it rock the lower frequencies to the highest measurement ever, indicating that indeed it wasn't a one-off super flare a decade ago. Proxima has been activated. Folks, the disaster playlist below the video and on our channel homepage are critical resources on this. Learn about the nearby stars, the solar system shift, why the galaxy brings a double nova trigger on a cycle, and the slew of evidence geophysically as well. We greatly appreciate your support. You can also read about this in our book, The Next End of the World, available at otf.cells.com. We have your wind maps and shots of our star to close. Subscribe and we'll do this all again tomorrow.
right here, but right now it's 5.30 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.